Roger Waters is officially returning to the dark side of the moon, and he's just released our first preview of the reworked album. I'll share my thoughts on this audacious new project next on Track by Track. Hey everybody, my name is Kyle, and this is Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. Thanks for tuning in today, and if this is your first time here, please take a second to click subscribe so that you won't miss future reviews and more. Earlier this year, amidst the varied excitement about the 50th anniversary of Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon album, news broke about Roger Waters' plan to release his own new solo recording of that classic album. That information in and of itself was newsworthy, of course, but what really got all of our attention was Waters' comments about the original album. I wrote The Dark Side of the Moon, Roger stated in an interview. Let's get rid of all this we crap. Of course, we were a band, there were four of us, we all contributed, but it's my project, and I wrote it. Now, any Pink Floyd fan knows Roger Waters has always worn his pride on his sleeve, but declaring the insignificance of his bandmates' contributions to one of the greatest albums of all time seemed to be reaching for new heights of hubris. That was almost six months ago now. Now that the dust has settled on that conflicting episode, Roger Waters has finally made official the news that was somewhat eclipsed by his superego back in February. The Dark Side of the Moon redo has been officially announced to be released on October 6th. In his new statement accompanying the announcement, Waters largely avoids the sort of incendiary language that stirred up controversy earlier this year. He states that in re-recording the album, his intent was to revisit those themes from the perspective of a now 79-year-old man. He concludes his statement acknowledging the fact that the original recording was one that he, Nick, Rick, and Dave, quote, have every right to be proud of. All right, let's set aside the Roger versus Dave stuff. I think that's well-covered territory. Instead, let's focus on Dark Side of the Moon redo, why Roger made it, and whether he should have made it at all. First of all, I have to say I actually like the title. Redo acknowledges that this is its own thing, with its own identity, not to be confused with the original masterpiece. In fact, it calls to mind the efforts of another auteur, Francis Ford Coppola, and his film Apocalypse Now. In 2001, Coppola re-edited the 1979 film and released a new version called Apocalypse Now Redo. Critical reaction was mixed, which is unsurprising. After all, he was messing with a classic. At least in Waters' case, he's not actually using the original recording at all, and none of the other members of Pink Floyd appear on the new album. Even more than Apocalypse Now, this dark side truly is a redo. So what about Roger's comments regarding revisiting the album from his now 79-year-old perspective, 50 years older than he was when the band recorded the original album? The idea of an older legacy rocker re-recording their classic songs in a more mature voice is not a new one. Paul Simon did it fairly effectively in 2018 with his In the Blue Light album, and Sting did it somewhat less effectively a year later on the album My Songs. During the pandemic, Bob Dylan took on a similar endeavor, which was just officially released as the album Shadow Kingdom. So why not Roger Waters? Honestly, I think it makes a lot of sense, especially when you consider that one of the predominant themes of Dark Side of the Moon is, in fact, mortality. I would certainly imagine that a septuagenarian would approach that topic quite differently than a man in his 20s. Take the song Money, for example. Waters has released his new version of the track as the lead single from the album. When the song came out in 1973, it made complete sense that a group of rock superstars might sing about buying expensive aircraft or football teams, even if the satire was lost on most listeners. It might resonate the same way in 2023, coming from some younger, up-and-coming rock or country act. But Roger Waters is not young. In fact, he'll be 80 when the album is released. I have no doubt his perspectives on money have changed over the past five decades. I'll leave it to you to debate what those perspectives may be down in the comments section. In any case, the new version of the song is unquestionably a dramatic departure from the original. To me, it calls to mind the aforementioned Bob Dylan, the way Waters now delivers the song in a low, gravelly voice, more spoken than sung. 
the more organic, bluesy instrumentation is reminiscent of Dylan as well, not to mention shades of Tom Waits. I can't say I'm a huge fan of the new poetic interlude that seems to replace the sax and guitar solo, though. It goes on too long and pushes the pretentiousness needle pretty far into the red. Not that that's unexpected or out of character in any way for Mr. Waters. So if Money 2023 is to be an indication of what we can expect from the rest of the redo recordings, I'm actually okay with that. See, here's my take on cover songs or re-recording songs. I'd much rather hear someone take chances and bring something new to the song than hear them try to recreate the original as faithfully as possible. If you're going to sound just like the original, what's the point? Not everyone agrees with me on that, and there will be some that will consider these new recordings to be almost blasphemous. I definitely don't subscribe to that school of thought. However, covers can and do go wrong. I did not think Waters' new version of Comfortably Numb from the lockdown sessions was effective. I'm not saying it was bad, but it wasn't terribly interesting either. Still, I respect the fact that Waters took a big swing and tried a different approach, unlike his other Lockdown Sessions tracks that hewed largely toward fidelity to the original versions. All that being said, I do wince at the notion of changing lyrics or injecting new passages into the music. As one of the original architects of The Dark Side of the Moon, I suppose Waters has the right to do exactly that. You, like me, may not enjoy the new spoken word elements in money. And although we may roll our eyes at it here, I'm certain our reaction would be far more extreme if someone else made that sort of change while re-recording the song. Another obvious comparison here is Taylor Swift. As most people know, she's re-recording her older albums, almost note for note in some cases, in an effort to reclaim ownership of her music. That's a messy situation for sure, and I don't want to get deep into it here. But in some cases, she's changing lyrics to her songs. Supposedly, Waters will also be making lyrical changes on Dark Side Rogers' version. I mean, Dark Side Redo. As the authors of these songs, Waters and Swift have every right to make these changes. That doesn't mean we have to like it. By the way, this is probably a good time to mention the fact that this new version of Dark Side of the Moon does come with a brand new coda. Yes, all of the album's original songs are represented from Speak to Me through Eclipse, but there's also a new composition tacked on at the end, some sort of new extended piece written by Waters and inspired by the process of revisiting this classic album. Similar to the lyrical changes, I'm not wild about the idea of amending the song cycle. It reminds me of when Waters inexplicably added his Radio Chaos solo song, The Tide is Turning, to the end of the wall at the Berlin concert. I'm sure Van Morrison, Joni Mitchell, and all the others were scratching their heads over why this historic event was being capped off with an all-star sing-along about Billy, his Donald Duck light, and the 1985 Live Aid concert. I mean, it's not as if Waters is putting Sunset Strip at the end of Dark Side, thankfully, but we'll see what we get. In any case, The Wall brings up a good point to sort of bring this conversation to a close. When it was first revealed that Roger Waters was re-recording Dark Side of the Moon, a lot of fans had a very negative reaction. And I'm not entirely sure why. After all, Waters had staged the all-star version of The Wall back in 1990, and then released his own live solo version of The Wall 25 years later. I don't recall any uproar in either of those cases. And, of course, the David Gilmore version of Pink Floyd also released a full new live version of Dark Side of the Moon on Pulse in 1995. Both Waters and Gilmore have a long history of performing Dark Side songs. Waters releasing Money as the lead single from the new album is a sort of full-circle moment, in fact, because the first Pink Floyd song he ever re-recorded and officially released was Money, live, as a B-side, to two of his Radio Chaos singles in 1987. So to answer the question of should Waters re-record Dark Side of the Moon, I say, why shouldn't he re-record Dark Side of the Moon? He's certainly entitled to do it, and he'd be the first to tell you so. Whether or not it will be any good, well, let's circle back on that when the album comes out on October 6th. Once again, my name's Kyle, and this has been Track by Track. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, plus check out some of these other videos below that I think you might also enjoy. And of course, be sure to click subscribe, because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.